Hi there. Hey, welcome. <laughs> How you going guys? Welcome to Discover the Wild at the Territory Wildlife Park Nocturnal House. My name's Fiona, I'm one of the keepers here and this is Nick who I work with and what we're going to do today is we're going to take you into one of our exhibits and get you to meet some of our beautiful animals at the Nocturnal House. I think one of the most favourite things for a lot of people that come to the Nocturnal House is the sugar gliders and some of you may have been really lucky enough to come in and um, do our experience here at the wildlife park where you can actually go into the exhibit and have seven crazy little dudes climb all over you. So what we're going to do today, Nick and I, we don't get to do this very often ourselves, we're normally the ones standing back, we're going to go in and do the feeding for you so you can see some of these beautiful little guys climb all over us and they're going to be so keen because we are going to take in some nectar for them and I think we're gonna see a real bit of a frenzy happening in the sugar glider exhibit today. You also get to meet Forrest, the spectacled hair wallaby as well. So, what do you reckon, Nick? Shall we go do it? Yeah, let's go. Okay, <laughs> see you in there. All right, welcome to the sugar glider experience, guys. Um, in here, as you can see, we've got a couple sugar gliders and it's a little bit of a frenzy at the moment because we haven't had any visitors as of late, so we couldn't do the experience. So what they're getting now is just a little bit of nectar, which is actually lorikeet nectar. It's got good fructose and good amount of sugars and stuff like that for them to eat. Uh, that's not their natural diet. This is just a little treat to, cut, to get them to come down so we can have a view of them. Now in here, we've got a colony of seven. So we've got five females and two males. And now the males actually have something what we call sexual dimorphism. So it's a, the males look a little bit different to the females and you can actually pick it up. Now this big guy here, the one with the bald patch on his head, I'll try to get him to stand still. That one there, he's actually a male. And what that bald patch on his head is, is actually a scent gland. So they use that scent gland to rub on his girlfriends. So he knows who's in his little colony. Um, and make sure that any intruders come and try to steal the food and the girls, that he knows the difference between them. We've also got the females, and the females just have the one singular black stripe on their head, so that's a little easy way to tell the difference. <laughs> there is a little bit of hissing and fighting because everybody's trying to steal the lollies of each other pretty much. So sugar gliders in the NT, we've actually got two subspecies. We've got our northern savannah glider and our southern savannah glider. So a little bit different to the normal sugar glider, but they're pretty much the same. They look the same. Down south, you get the bigger gliders. You get squirrel gliders, which are nearly double the size of the normal NT uh, savannah gliders or sugar gliders. Um, and these guys are built to go through the treetops. So they glide tree to tree, jumping across making sure they can uh, get away from predators or go and <laughs> explore anywhere they want to. So they use what we call a gliding apparatus, which is just a little skin flap in here. If they'll sit still, sometimes oh, they let me. You got one there? Okay. Here we go. No. no. <laughs> so this little, oh, no, you don't want it? Oh, there we go. No. <laughs> you guys are too crazy <laughs> today. Um, and so they use that little skin flap that goes from their little pinky finger all the way to their pinky toe. I've got no more, guys. Um, and what they use that for is to glide. So they do like a big splits in the air. Thank you, Fiona. Uh, they do big splits in the air and that helps them catch some of the wind underneath them when they jump so they don't fall all the way to the ground. Now, uh, the longest recorded glide for a sugar glider is down south but it's actually quite misleading. Even though they're so small, the longest recorded glide was 50 meters, which is a huge, huge area for these little guys to glide through the treetops. Now that's from down south where they got giant red gums and they're a little bit taller than the trees up here. So the gliders have a lot of different uh, food items that they eat out in the wild. This is just their treat, so they're not gonna eat this all the time. This is actually to mimic what you get out of flowers. So. <laughs> Sugar gliders are really important to our ecosystem and they're one of our biggest propagators and cross pollinators. So they go from flower to flower like a bee and they get all the nectar around their face, around this little fluffy face here. You can see he's getting all sticky. And then they go from one flower to the other flower um, and they just cross spread all the, all the pollen Excuse and help me. them germinate. And so they're really, really important to our ecosystem, not just as a part of the food chain, um, but also part as a seed dispersal as well. So they eat a lot of seeds and grass seeds and stuff like that. Um, and then they go around and they might 
poop it out. And once they poop it out, they like that, exactly like that on cue, um, what, the seeds will go into the ground and after a little bit of rain or some moisture, they start germinating in a little se- uh, tree or whatever they ate came out. Now, sugar glider in its name is pretty misleading as well. They eat a lot of, lot of meat. So they love little uh, meat items like insects. They'll even eat little mice um, and they'll even eat little reptiles as well. So they are omnivorous, meaning they eat vegetables and meat. Mm-hmm. You guys are a little bit cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> so all of the sugar gliders in here were hand raised and rescued. So these guys were actually found as little babies, not doing so well out in the wild. Either mum wasn't with them or they were found as a little baby on the ground um, or they were injured. And so they were donated or brought to the Territory Wildlife Park to get back to health. As you can see, they're not very scared of being out <laughs> outside, especially when there's big predators such as people around. Oh, you give it back. <laughs> Uh, and so we can't release these guys back out into the wild. If we released them back out in the wild, they wouldn't do too well. They don't know what a dog or a cat is, and dogs and cats aren't too friendly towards these guys. These guys, however, their numbers in the wild are still doing pretty well, um, just because they can be up and top of the trees and out of the way of all the predators, such as cars and stuff like that. They are our nocturnal animals, so they're using the big eye and big ears to see everything and hear everything at night. Um, and then once they're running around at night time, they usually don't come out around outside at around 1 to 2 a.m. And so not many people see these guys out in the wild, but they are throughout the NT. They're also really, really secretive. So um, even if you are out at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., you probably won't see them anyway because they don't make a sound when they're jumping through the treetops and they barely make a, a, a vocal sound either. Once the go to sleep, they go to sleep in what we call a tree hollow. So they love their tree hollows and they all sit as a big colony. We're out of nectar, guys. They all sit as a big colony in that tree hollow. So they can have colonies all the way up to 12 um, and sometimes even higher than 12. And so they all sit all bundled up just like this inside that tree hollow and nesting together until the sun goes down and then they'll come back out again to go forage. So this is Boris, our spectacle hair wallaby. He's one of the lesser known species of um, wallabies out in the NT. And these guys are actually pretty solitary animals, so they don't really like one another usually. Although he can smell what I had for breakfast on my breath, so he thinks he's gonna get some breakfast. <laughs> Boris is the only male in here, and he's about four years old. So he's still quite young, but he's still got a little bit to go in his life. And they get that name Spectacle Hair Wallaby from this orange ring around his face. So it looks like they're wearing a pair of glasses or spectacles. Hey, Bori. <laughs> so Boris was a rescue animal as well. He was found as a little joey, hopping around by himself, way too young. He was only about this big, as big as my fist. So way too young to be out of the pouch of mum. Um, so he, as you can see, he's not scared of anyone. So he's been hand raised uh, by keepers here at the Territory Wildlife Park. Hey, you're pretty cute, aren't you? Yeah, you're <laughs> pretty cute. <laughs> Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed that experience with us today in the Sugar Glider exhibit. Nick and I have got a fair bit of work to do now, so we're probably going to have to say goodbye. But please remember to um, come and join us again tomorrow at 2 o'clock for Discover the Wild when we go see some more amazing animals around Territory Wildlife Park. See you guys! See ya!